Well, if you thought that installing Linux on the Wii was crazy enough, buckle up. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, yeah, we're going to be trying something kind of crazy. Running macOS on the Nintendo Wii, which is something that I feel like has been talked about ever since people began tinkering and messing around with the Wii in ways that Nintendo would rather you not. Because this thing has a PowerPC processor inside that is part of the same series of processors found in G3 iMacs. Of course, there's a lot more to OS compatibility than just the type of processor, but it's something that got people thinking if this was possible. And I've received many comments about it over the years, so I actually started working on this project a while back when I was sent a link to this video, shot in 2009, I'm still saving up for a capture card style, it shows macOS booting on the Wii. And there was a link in the description to a RAR file containing everything you'd need. So I thought, great, this should make for a pretty simple video, which was my first mistake because as I'm sure you're all aware, things are never simple on this channel. If we dig into the files here, you'll notice that this is just a copy of DOSBox for the Wii, because as it turns out, this whole thing is accomplished by using Fusion. Not VMware Fusion, this is a 68K Mac emulator for MS-DOS. Meaning that, yes, you have to go through two emulation layers to get this working, and as you can imagine, that doesn't work super well, because holy cow, this thing is slow. Remember that video I mentioned before? Well, it's 15 minutes long, and all of that time is spent loading into macOS, which doesn't even finish before the video cuts off. And that's basically the same thing that happened to me. So I began to wonder if there was a way to install macOS natively on the Wii without relying on emulation. And turns out, there is, and it's made possible using the Mac on Linux project that's been around for over a decade now, which lets you run the classic Mac OS and even some OS X versions on Linux natively. There's no CPU emulation or anything. And luckily for us, someone from GBA Temp has already taken the liberty to prepare an SD card image with everything set up and ready to go. So all we have to do is download it, flash it to an SD card, pop it into the Wii, launch Boot Me, and... Yeah, again, nothing is ever simple on this channel. When the disk drive light flashes like this, it's letting you know that it can't boot into Boot Me. Of course, we're not trying to boot into Boot Me, but we've replaced it with modified files that allow Wii Linux to run in place of it. So, something's not working right. I initially thought that something was wrong with the image because we were able to get Linux working just fine on this thing in a previous video, but nobody who responded to the original post said anything about it not working. And I was able to find this French blog post detailing the process of doing this, and there didn't seem to be anything that indicated something was up with the image. So I began to troubleshoot, I re-downloaded the image, I tried different SD cards, even different pieces of software to flash it multiple times over, and in the end, nothing worked. Which is hands down the most frustrating feeling ever. When something works just fine for everybody else, but when you do the same thing, there's a problem. So after spending some more time tinkering with this whole thing, I had a brainwave. I thought, Maybe the problem lies only in the bootable partition on the SD card, and the partition actually containing the OS and data is intact. So to put this theory to the test, I went through the process of installing regular Wii Linux on the console again, just like I did in that other video, and then I took the SD card out and plugged it into my computer, along with the card that had the Mac on Wii image flashed to it. I then opened up a partitioning tool to delete the boot partition from the Mac on Wii card, and clone the boot partition from the regular Wii Linux card over to it. It works, and let me tell you, I had never been this happy to see Linux starting up in my entire life. But I shouldn't have gotten too excited, because although Linux booted up just fine, and all the necessary files were there, Mac on Linux wouldn't start. It kept spitting out an error saying that it couldn't find the necessary kernel modules that corresponded to the version of the Linux kernel that we were running. There was a way to bypass this by appending "-a to the end of the command, but that didn't help at all. It now said that the module format was invalid and that it couldn't be loaded. So the next thing I did was append "-list to the end of the start 
different mall commands so that we could see what modules were available to us, and I immediately noticed the mismatch. The version of the Linux kernel running on the Wii was 2.6.32 Isabel Wii, but the module needed to run macOS was compiled for kernel version 2.6.32.71. I tried looking around online for a version of the module for the kernel that we were running, but it proved rather difficult. The Mac on Linux website, though still online, is filled with links that point to a now non-existent FTP server. However, I was able to locate the project's SourceForge page, and I was almost about to download all of these packages and rummage through them to see if they had what we needed, but then I had another brainwave. If you remember from the Wii Linux video, we updated the Linux kernel version by swapping out the ppcboot.l file on the boot partition with a new one, which had updated support for the Wii's wireless adapter. So I went back to the SD card, flashed with the image from GBA temp, grabbed its ppcboot.l and used it to replace the one on the SD card I was using, and it booted up. And now we have this image of Tux on screen during the boot process, which was a good sign because it wasn't there before, indicating that the kernel version is indeed different. I confirmed this after logging in when the system identified itself as Linux White 2.6.32.71, an exact match. And when I tried to start Mac on Linux this time, it just said that it couldn't find any bootable disk, which is an error I'm more than happy to see. If we take a look back at the GBA temp thread, the poster says that Mac on Linux was set up to look for a hard disk image file called imac.hfv on the root of a USB drive plugged into the Wii. So I went ahead and downloaded this pre-installed image of macOS 8.1 from Macintosh repository, renamed it, and put it on the USB drive. Then I mounted the drive on the Wii, started up X again, and ran start mall for what seems like the hundredth time. However, we ran into yet another problem because even though Mac on Linux could find the hard disk image, it said it wasn't bootable. Now, it's worth noting that this image was specifically made for Basilisk 2, which I'm sure handles ROM files a bit differently. In fact, Mac on Linux doesn't even require a separate ROM file to work, but it does search for one on the hard disk image, and I'm guessing it didn't find what it needed. So plan B was to use a macOS 9 install CD image I had, which was actually already configured as a bootable drive in the configuration file just commented out, along with the physical disk drive itself. And yes, because I know people will ask, I did try to use this physical install CD I had, but it turns out I was wasting my time because the Wii's optical drive only has a DVD laser, though you are able to mount DVDs just fine using this command seen over on the wiki page. So yeah, this thing has been a prop this whole time, and you fell for it, you frickin' fell for it. Anyways, after getting that configured, it was time for the moment of truth. That's right, it actually worked. Here's macOS 9 starting up on my Nintendo Wii. Let me tell you, it was an amazing feeling to finally get this thing working after going through all of that nonsense. And for those wondering, yes, I did try to get some early versions of OS 10 booted up on this thing, but I wasn't successful, so OS 9 will have to do for now. Though we're far from done because we haven't installed the thing yet. So here it is in all of its glory. It's honestly amazing to just get this running after going through all these hoops. Now you probably have noticed that, uh, well, the text is a little bit screwed up to where it's basically illegible. And from what I can tell, this is just the side effect of running this on the Wii. It just doesn't display this stuff properly, though it's not all the text. You know, the menu options up here and pretty much everything in the menu bar uh, is displayed just fine. But it's these options when you go into the menus and the icons over here. Uh, but these icons here, or th this text rather, uh, displays just fine at least until you highlight it, then it kind of just screws up. Yeah, that is unfortunate. But this is mentioned in the blog post uh, from that guy that, you know, that this is something you just have to be aware of and he wasn't able to really find a solution to it. But not that it really matters. It will make it a little bit difficult to install uh, Mac OS 9, but we are going to do that here and attempt to go through the installation wizard. Now, you can see that the hard disk image that we tried to boot from originally with OS 8.5 on it or OS 8.6, whatever it was, is mounted in here. So this is it. We've got all these applications on here. And, you know, we could try to run, like, the Apple CD audio player. Let's see. Well, <laughs> there's an error message I cannot read. I think I can make out CD-ROM. I don't know. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, here it is. What we're going to try to do is just install macOS 9 
on this hard disk image and just erase the existing install of OS 8. So we'll run the installation wizard here. And again, not really gonna be able to make out any of this, but we'll hit on continue. And so there it is, Mac HDD, I'm assuming. I mean, it's the only thing that shows up here, so it has to be the uh, you know drive. And we can't hit select, but I believe if we go to options here and we say perform clean installation, uh, this should allow us to overwrite. Yeah, there it is. So we'll hit select and <laughs> Okay, we have a before you install, I can make that out, but yeah, this is <laughs> this is just really obnoxious. But okay, we'll hit continue. I think this is the license agreement. And let's see what options we get. Okay, update, Apple hard disk drivers, create installation report. Okay, and what do we have under customize? Okay, uh, well, <laughs> I wish I could see what this stuff is. Um, we'll just say don't customize. We're just going to go with what it does by default, just a standard install. Uh, so we'll hit start and there we go. Checking Mac HDD. Uh, oh, okay. This just looks like an information pop-up, not an error. Um, but let's hit okay and see. Okay. So that was evidently nothing major. If this actually works, I will be pleasantly surprised. Oh, there we go. See, I spoke too soon. I shouldn't have said anything. I think configuration maybe is what that says. Um, we can say try again. So maybe this is just a problem with a file or something. It says we can skip it, but let's try again. Okay. So it is the same thing. So what does skip do? Okay, so maybe that was just, all right, it came up again here. Yeah, this isn't looking good. <laughs> this is like, uh, you know, when, when you're trying to install like Windows 95 and it, and it gets to that last portion, it can't recognize the uh, CD driver and it comes up with all those, like it can't find this file and you can just skip all of them, but then, you know, you're missing a bunch of components when the system uh, logs in. So, I mean, we can, s <laughs> I don't know. Let's just keep hitting skip and see, you know, if it's able to install properly. But yeah, I literally, can't tell what any of this says it's very difficult to make out now the other option which is what i'm going to try to do if this doesn't work is just install os 9 on another mac and then you know make a a, a hard disk image of that and then copy it over the usb drive okay so we have this message it looks like this is the end of the word install or uninstall um i would hope it's saying mac os 9 has been successfully installed but I don't think, something tells me that's not the case. Something tells me it's saying something else. Stop or continue, what do we wanna do? Let's try continue. Oh, I think this is, yeah, this is just gonna do the same thing again. So I'm guessing it failed to install. Although, wait a second, yeah, it did write files to it because we've got macOS 9 applications here. I don't know, let's just try, let's try to quit out of this. Oh, I'm, I'm so used to OS 10. I'm going to the Apple menu. Let's quit out of this. And then we need to, uh, let's just exit out of here. And I'm gonna go and edit that file here again. And we'll just comment out the uh, disk image here so that our HFV is the only thing that it can boot from. So we'll save that. And then we'll start X and start mall. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. No freaking way it actually worked. Holy cow. Yep, there it is. <laughs> there it is. It's macOS 9 on the Wii. Like actually installed, you know, instead of just booting off of the disk. Um, I think this is, is this the setup assistant? Is that what this is? We'll just close out of that. Are you sure? Yes. God, not being able to read like half this, or more than half of this stuff is... Uh, <laughs> is very annoying. But yeah, Mac OS 9.2.2, uh, 48 megs of RAM it's reporting. I don't know, let's try to launch uh, some applications here. Let's see if QuickTime will open up. Oh my gosh, it's so screwed up. Okay, I can't even tell what these buttons are. Though we're not gonna be able to hear anything if we try to play something because the sound driver is not loaded properly. And that's where this comes in. So I, I noticed this, I was like, why is there a disk image here? We commented out the ISO file in the configuration document. So how is it loading a disk image? Well, this is uh, something that Mac on Linux loads by default. And this contains this audio patch that we have to drag onto the system folder. And apparently this will allow us to display or to display, to hear audio. Uh, so let's go ahead and just do that. And we'll hit okay. Okay, I think that just copied. There is a CD driver patch as well, um, but 
<laughs> you open up the readme document and well you can't freaking read it because it's all <laughs> it's all a bunch of gibberish now this is where i was experimenting i was doing this off camera i was looking at the uh fonts here because i was like maybe if it's a font issue if we select something and change the font but i went through all of these here and you're going to see it doesn't make a difference at all so now let's go to control panels again and where is sound at there it is. Get an error message. It really, it really sucks because I, I literally can't even attempt to troubleshoot this because I have no idea what the freaking message says. <laughs> like, it makes it impossible. So I don't know uh, if that actually worked. Maybe we have to restart. Let's just try to do that. Now, can we restart and will it automatically start up again or will this just quit out of mall and then we have to start? Let, let, let's find out. Yeah, it just looks like it quits out of it completely. So, okay, we'll start mall again. Oh, wait, I think... I think that's all we needed, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at the audio meters on the capture computer here, and it's not it's not displaying anything, but the sound panel did load. So, oh, okay, we gotta change it to mall audio. This output device may not be available to currently running applications, so they have quit. Okay, let's try that. There we go. I don't know, let's just go through some programs here and kind of browse through the uh, the, the stuff. Now, I, again, I think that some of this stuff is left over from the previous OSA install, because like Netscape Communicator uh, was not bundled with, yeah, or actually you can see it's not even in here, uh, or, or like the whole thing's not, not in here. You've got a couple QuickTime plugin stuff that's still there. Uh, but yeah, so that was probably removed by the Mac OS 9 installer, but it's not completely removed. I thought it would have formatted the drive though, but I guess not. Uh, Sherlock 2, we can open that up. Ah uh, yes, we got that like pre-OS 10, OS 10 design language going on here, which is the style of the window. We saw it with QuickTime as well. Although to end off this video the right way, we're gonna do one more little thing here. Oh yeah, we're going there. Let's see how crazy I am. I'm gonna close out of all these freaking windows that we left opened up. And uh, I think this is it here. Oh boy. Yes, there we go. Oh my God. Oh my god, dude, I swear. <laughs> I wonder how, like, oh, uh, well, what are the controls? Is it using the mouse? No, it's not using the mouse. Either it's not responding to my controls because they're configured wrong, or, oh, wait. No, I think it's just going really slow. I think that's what it's doing. Oh my god, holy cow. Okay, can we just quit out of this? Oh my, yeah, it's, it's really bad. Holy cow, look at that frame rate. That is glorious. Yeah, there is a port of Doom for the Wii because, you know, everything runs Doom. It's just the law. Uh, so, you know, that that's probably going to give... If you really want to run Doom on the Wii, there is a better way to do it than running it through uh, Mac on Linux here. Um, but... This technically works. I mean, it does run. It's just it's running at a such a, such an awful frame rate to where it's literally unplayable. So yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to load a new game because uh, <laughs> I mean, look at it. It's running at like negative frame rate. I mean, seriously. But yeah, I mean that. Oh gosh, I just can't believe this actually worked. I mean, it's just such a great feeling, like just going through all this troubleshooting to finally get the thing freaking working. Um, so yeah, that is that is Mac OS 9 installed and running on the Nintendo Wii without emulation or anything because again, Mac on Linux is not an emulator and Linux, you know, we're not we're just running that on the Wii, right? Like we did in that other video. So, this is incredibly awesome and uh yeah, Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.